Okay. And the next speaker of the session is uh, Ariel No, who is going to talk about secure multi party computation with sublinear preprocessing, uh, joint work with Elet uh, Boyle, Niv Gilboa, and Yuvali Shai. So, thank you, uh, Carlson, for the introduction. Um, right. So, in this uh, work, uh, we consider. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's not working. Okay. Okay, good. So in this work, we consider the uh, standard setting of multi-party computation, where we have n parties who wish to jointly compute an arithmetic circuit, uh, which is defined over uh, a field or a ring with addition and multiplication gates. And the security model that we consider is malicious security and dishonest majority. Now we know that in the dishonest majority setting, a very popular model is the pre-processing model, where the computation is divided into two phases, an offline phase and an online uh, phase. In the offline or the pre-processing phase, the parties generate correlated randomness, which is later consumed by them in the online execution where they compute uh, the desired functionality. Another way to look at this model is, to, is, is to, v, to view the execution as an execution with a trusted dealer that gives the parties correlated randomness, and then later uh, design a secure protocol to securely uh, distribute the dealer. The advantage working in this model is that we can move all the uh, uh, expensive uh, public key crypto machinery, which is unavoidable in this setting, to the offline and obtain an online execution, which is very fast, cheap, and basically information theoretic. So the two main metrics that are typically considered for this model, maybe the three main metrics, uh, and we will also look at, at these metrics, are the, are the communication cost of the online and offline uh, separately, and the size of the correlated randomness which the parties need uh, to store uh, for the online execution. So the most uh, popular example for working in this model is to use Beaver triples. And here the dealer gives the parties shares of random multiplication triples, which are used by them to multiply shared inputs with very low communication, as can be seen in this uh, table. Uh, what's important from this table is that the uh, communication cost per multiplication gate per party is constant, and therefore the uh, overall communication grows linearly with the size of the circuit. Um, so this, so for thermal security, what we need is sim is plain uh, beaver triples to achieve malicious security. So the leading approach in the last uh, decade or so is the speeds approach, where the dealer gives the parties shares of authenticated beaver triples, which means that each triple is now multiplied with a random global authenticator, which is kept secret, and this is what allows the parties to detect cheating. The advantage of, of this approach is that the online communication cost remain the same as the cost with semi-owner security. However, clearly the correlated randomness, the amount of correlated randomness grows uh, by a factor of two for large fields and by a factor that depends on the statistical security parameter uh, for small fields or rings because the uh, authenticated trivial must be generated over a larger field. And the offline cost is the expensive part of the protocol and is the main bottleneck. And there is a long line of works aiming to improve the efficiency of the offline phase. But still, the cost of the offline is orders of magnitude higher than the cost of the online. Uh, I should mention that there are also other approaches, uh, which give, which give um, a diff different trade-offs between the online and the offline. So how can we uh, solve this uh, bottleneck, the bottleneck of the offline cost? So a new, relatively new direction in MPC, which kind of set a dream goal for MPC, is to have a silent preprocessing using uh, PCGs, which stands for pseudo-random correlation generators. So the idea here is that the dealer will give each party a short correlated seed, and then each party can locally expand its seed to receive shares of authenticated triples. If we would have had such an amazing tool, then this means that the online cost remains the same as before, but now we can compress the correlated randomness to be sublinear in the size of the circuit, because each party needs to store only the correlated seed. And also the offline cost will be, uh, the offline communication cost will be sublinear because now the parties need to interact only to generate these short seeds. 
So this would be amazing. However, currently we have only concretely efficient PCGs for unauthenticated triples, which means that for same own security, we can use this tool. But for malicious security, where we need authenticated triples, we have currently only solutions, uh, concretely efficient PCGs, only for two-party computation over large fields. So in this work, uh, we use a different approach uh, that gives that uh, achieves the same achieves the desired uh, uh, efficiency, namely that we achieve both uh, sublinear correlated randomness and sublinear communication costs for the offline, but in a different way. So in our approach, the parties first run the same semi-honest computation, uh, where they can where they consume only unauthenticated beaver triples. And then they run a short, lightweight verification step, where, which requires some extra uh, amount of correlated randomness. However, this amount of correlated randomness is sublinear in the size of the circuit. So this means that the dealer, for example, can give the parties seeds for generating unauthenticated triples. With, and as we saw, we know how to do it in an efficient way. And for the second part, the, the dealer needs to give uh, some more sublinear amount of correlated randomness. So now when we want to distribute the dealer, this means that the parties uh, need some sublinear protocol for generating unauthenticated triples, which we know how to do. And for the second part, because the, um, the uh, correlated randomness is of sublinear size, this means that we can use standard MPC tools to generate the extra amount of correlated randomness. So our result, if we summarize it, is a protocol in the pre-processed model to compute any arithmetic circuit with sublinear offline communication costs, sublinear correlated randomness, uh, an online phase which is uh, non-cryptographic. And the security of the protocol is based on any sublinear communication protocol for generating unauthenticated multiplication triples. And for the second part, what we need is only additive homomorphic encryption schemes. So this is our result. Um, yeah, so how do we compare the previous work? So we already talked about the speeds approach. So in the second column, this is um, a work from last year for, with the same set of authors, uh, the BGI N21 paper, where we showed how to compress the correlated randomness to be logarithmic in the size of the circuit, but the offline communication was still linear in the size of the circuit. Here in this work, we increase slightly the amount of correlated randomness to be a square root, but this allows us also, also to compress the offline communication cost to be a square root uh, of the size of the circuit. Okay, so how, so how does our verification protocol works? So the main building block that we use in our protocol is zero knowledge, fully linear proof systems uh, due to Bonetal from Crypto 19. And the idea is that, uh, so we have a prover who wish to uh, prove some statement over an input X. So the idea here is that the prover will output some proof pi, and then there will be some public randomness that will be chosen. And based on this uh, public randomness, the verifier will make some queries on the input and the proof. And then bent based on the answer, he will need to decide whether to accept or reject. And now these proof systems are called fully linear because the verifier is only allowed to make linear queries to the proof and the input, which means that there is some query vector and it can only um, compute an inner product between this vector and the proof and the input, and based on the answer to uh, decide whether to accept or reject. And we can define complete uh, soundness and zero knowledge uh, for this uh, proof system in, uh, in, in the standard way. So from this uh, somewhat somehow uh, abstract tool, uh, we can derive a very uh, practical primitive, which is called distributed zero knowledge proofs. And here we, uh, we realize this, uh, this idea of making only linear queries by having multiple verifiers. So each verifier now will hold uh, a piece of the input X, or in, other, in our context, context uh, the, 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 the input X will be secret shared across the verifiers. And now what we will tell the prover is to also secret share the proof between the verifiers. And then each verifier will locally will query its shares of the proof and the input. 
And if X and Pi are secret shared using a linear secret sharing scheme, this means that the parties will also obtain a secret sharing of the answers to the queries. So they can simply uh, exchange their answers and exchange their shares and reconstruct the, answer, the answers to the queries. So this is how we realize this idea of making only uh, linear queries. And what Bonnet et al. showed is that if X, the input X, is robustly shared across the parties, meaning that the shares held by the honest parties are enough for reconstructing the secret, and the statement to be proven is a degree two polynomial over uh, the input X, then there exists a distributed zero knowledge proof protocol with sublinear communication in the size of the input, and with soundness that holds even if there is a collusion between the prover and, the, and a set of the verifiers. And this tool is very useful to achieve malicious security in MPC because to achieve malicious security, what we need is a way to verify that multiplications were computed correctly. And it's easy to see that the statement that we want to prove is basically a degree two polynomial over inputs that are shared across the parties because the parties hold shares of all the inputs and outputs to multipl of multiplication gates. And indeed, this tool was used uh, in the honest majority setting uh, to achieve uh, malicious security with sublinear uh, additive overhead, relying on the fact that in the honest majority setting, the secret sharing is inherently robust. But when we move to the dishonest majority setting, it's much, it's much more challenging because how, because how can we achieve robustness uh, without increasing the amount of collagen randomness? So the idea that we used in BGIN21 was um, to use the dealer as one of the parties and to use him in order to achieve robustness. So first we defined a robust secret sharing scheme using the dealer, which we called the star secret sharing scheme. And then we showed how to, um, and we use the same idea here in this work, how to maintain this robustness in the verification protocol. And here, the, the way to do it is to use the dealer as a verifier in the distributed zero knowledge proof. So how does it work? So first, what is this uh, star secret sharing scheme? So the idea is very simple and is, ba and is basically used uh, everywhere. So the idea is that uh, for each uh, wire, um, for example, for inputs and outputs of multiplication gates, what we want is that uh, each party will hold the must secret and a share of the mask, while the dealer knows uh, all the, the mask and all, and all the shells. And this gives us the robustness that we need because now its secret can be reconstructed by each party plus the dealer. Right? So each honest party needs only to, and, and the dealer can reconstruct the secret. And this is uh, uh, suffices for what we need. And this scheme is basically sim at least implicitly or sometimes even explicitly used in many semi-honest protocols. So what I mean to show is how to use it, how to maintain this robustness also in the verification protocol, given that we have, um, given that the parties hold these uh, mass values on the wires of the circuit. So how do we verify uh, multiplications? So what the party wish to verify is that the output of each multiplication is consistent with the, in, with the inputs. So we, we can replace each value here with the must value plus the mask. Right, so, and the parties of course want to verify all multiplications together so they can take a random linear combination of all these, uh, of all these, these uh, equations and eventually obtain one uh, equation that they want to check. So now, so this is the equation that we want to check. If we look at this equation, so we can easily see that these values are known by all parties. These are the random coefficients that the parties choose jointly choose at the beginning of the verification protocol, and these values become public. And the other values are the mass values that the parties saw during the, the semi-honest computation. The other values, these are the masks, are known to the dealer and share to the parties. If we open this uh, equation and do all the math, what we will obtain is that we can express this, um, we can express this equation as an inner product between two vectors. One vector contains values that are known by all parties, and the second vector contains uh, values that are known by the dealer and share to the parties. So this is what the parties wish to verify. So what we get here is, first of all, uh, an, an expression which is a degree two polynomial. 
And second, that, it, that the input is shared in a robust way, in, the, in, the, in a robust way, because each input is known by either an honest party or by the dealer. And therefore, we know that we can prove this, this statement using distributed knowledge proofs with sublinear communication in the size of the input. So we know there exists such, such a protocol with sublinear communication. It only remains to show how to emulate this protocol in our setting. So the idea is that, uh, uh, so we will use the dealer as a verifier as well. So we have the parties who know their inputs, and we have the dealer who know the uh, remaining parts of the inputs. Now we will ask the prover to also secret share the proof in the same way, meaning that uh, uh, the parties will see the masked proof, and the dealer will hold the mask. So this means now that each uh, piece of information, the input, the input, and the proof are additively shared between each party and the dealer. So now uh, each party and the dealer can simply um, uh, run the linear queries over their shares of the input and the, the proof and obtain a star sharing of the answer, meaning that the uh, answer to the queries are shared between each party and the dealer. So this robustness of the secret sharing that we maintain is eventually what gives us the soundness of the proof, meaning that uh, a corrupted party cannot cheat. So it only remains to show uh, how to emulate the prover, right? Because who is the prover here? No one knows uh, the input, right? So the idea, the idea is that we will also let the parties emulate together the prover. And here we rely on the fact that each, uh, uh, each value here is either known, the, the vector A is known by all parties, and the vector B is shared to the parties, because each party holds a share of all the masks. So what we can do, so, what, so we, can, we can show that each party can locally compute its additive share of the proof, pi i. And once uh, each party locally computes its additive share, it can simply star share its additive share, meaning that each party will broadcast to the other parties uh, his masked share of the proof. And then the parties can locally uh, add all these masked uh, shares and obtain the masked proof while the dealer knows the mask. So this is how we can emulate uh, uh, the prover by all parties. So this is the main idea. So what do we get from this process? What do we get from using the dealer as one of the verifiers? So as we saw, each piece, each piece of information is known by an honest participant. This is what gives us the robustness that we need, which leads to soundness. The fact that the statement is a, is a two-degree polynomial, as we said before, this is what gives us the sublinear communication. Now, because the communication is sublinear and because the dealer acts as one, uh, as one, as, as a verifier, this means that the, uh, the communication from the side of the dealer is, is also sublinear in the size of the circuit. And the communication, the, the messages from the side of the dealer will be given as correlated randomness to the parties. So, and finally, because the dealer performs all its computations over random data, over then uh, the dealer can basically pre process its computation and hence the result as correlated randomness to the parties. So this is what we achieve by using the dealer as a verifier. Okay, so we have some concrete costs uh, in the paper, uh, but because time is running up, um, let me jump into how to distribute the dealer. So what, are the dealers, what does uh, the dealer compute? So I didn't show you exactly how exactly the, the distributed knowledge proof protocol works, but believe me that what the dealer does is the following. So the dealer needs to choose a random point tau and then evaluate square root uh, polynomials where the degree of each polynomial is square root in the size of the circuit on this random point tau. And the result, the evaluation of all these polynomials is the um, is its correlated is the correlated monomers that is given to the parties. So this is what the data does, and the uh, and these polynomials are defined by the Beaver triples. Okay, so the data need to give the parties shells of Beaver triples and these uh, evaluation points of square root polynomials. So in order to distribute the data. What we suggest is to do the following. So we now let the parties uh, generate encryptions of the power of tau, and we will use an additive homomorphic encryption. And now each party who holds shells of the BB triples can simply evaluate homomorphically uh, the his shell of the polynomial on the encrypted values. 
and obtain an, an encryption of a of of a shell of the of the evaluation of the of each polynomial and then the parties can simply exchange the encryption and then uh, decrypt the answers so what if we look at the communication of this protocol so the parties need to interact in order to generate square root ciphertext but this can be done in a generic way with sublinear cost for generating the bivet triples we can use as we said, uh, PCGs, for example, or any sublinear protocol for generating shares of unauthenticated bivet triples. And finally, the parties need to communicate in order to decrypt square root ciphertext. So overall, the amount of communication is square root in the size of the circuit. So this is the high level ID. Uh, but of course, there is some more work to do. What I described is basically uh, the, the, the basic framework. Uh, with uh, and this this gives us uh, an offline with semi online security for uh, online with malicious security. It's easy to see also how to using the generic tool how to achieve covert security with sublinear communication cost and to achieve malicious security. So so feasibility wise, we can use any generic communication preserving compiler. If we want a completely efficient uh, solution, then there are some challenges here. In particular, what happens if a corrupted party use, uh, that does not use the share that he received from the PCGs? Then this is a problem, and we need to deal it with some uh, by adding some more tools. Uh, and in particular, this, this might this uh, requires the uh, added homomorphic inclusion scheme to be also to to uh, satisfy also some assumption that is called the linear only assumption. But this I will leave you to read in the uh, full version of the paper. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Ariel. Uh, are there questions? Um, Good. If not, then I have one. Um, is there a way of turning your construction into something that has identifiable abort? Um, for the emergency secure protocol? Oh, that's a good question. We didn't uh, think about it too much. Um, I don't know. Um, but if you have malicious security in the online phase, um, and maybe a MPC protocol for the pre-processing that is also having identifiable abort, then maybe it could work. Uh, might, might be, yeah. yeah. But we didn't uh, think about it, yeah. Okay, cool. That's a good question. Thank you very much, Ariel. Thank you.